Many of you have seen this in stores. It's called a four function calculator. So called because it can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Four functions, or put another way, four operations. Some fancy four function calculators can also take square roots and maybe one or two other things, but they were by modern standards pretty limited. Go back 50 or so years and they were state of the art, but we've made some progress since then. Here's a scientific calculator as an example. But even on this calculator, you won't find this new hidden operation. This isn't some kind of conspiracy. The problem with the operation I want to show you today is that it tends to blow minds about as well as it does calculator memory. The name of this operation is tetration, and it's the one you probably weren't ever taught. Let's see what it is. Our starting point is the first thing you learned how to do, counting. We will call this operation zero. You have a number, and to figure out how much quantity that is, you just will count up to it. The first real operation we come across is what we'll call operation one, addition. Really, addition is just repeated counting. Add two numbers, and you're being asked to count up two sequences in a row without restarting. So as an obvious example, consider three plus five. You can either count up to three, one, two, three, and then count another five right where you are, one, two, three, four, five, that's eight, or go in the other direction, start at five and count another three. In this way, we can say that you can unpack addition and find counting. The next operation is multiplication. To multiply three and five, you have to unpack it. And if you do, you find repeated addition. That is, you can say add three to itself five times, or if you want to do it the other way, add five to itself three times. You'll get the same answer, 15, either way. But isn't that interesting? You can unpack multiplication to find addition and unpack addition to find counting. So you might be wondering, well, what's multiplication itself packed in? We actually have an answer, it's exponentiation. That is, if you take three to the exponent of five, which usually just gets said three to the fifth, then you're really asking to multiply three by itself five times. A little bit of vocabulary, and that we'll call the three the base and the five the exponent. Anyway, you'll notice we get a number that is much bigger this time. Three times three times three times three times three is 243, much larger than what we've been looking at earlier. Notice that you get a very different answer if you swap the order this time. Five to the third is five times itself three times, which is five times five times five, 125. So let's take a look at what we've made so far. Counting is operation zero, adding is operation one because inside of it you'll find repeated counting, multiplication is operation two because inside of it you'll find repeated addition, and exponentiation is operation three because inside of it you will find repeated multiplication. This begs the question, much like what we just asked a second ago about exponentiation, what is it packed in? The answer is what I hinted at at the beginning of the video, tetration. And this is operation four, hence the tetra prefix. If you're wondering how to do it, just repeat the mantra from before. Tetration is repeated exponentiation. Okay, well, how do we do that? Let's use the numbers from before. Five to the superpower of three would be five to the fifth to the fifth, which is 1.9 times 10 to the 2,185. Yikes. To see where that number comes from, we evaluate from right to left. That means you start with five to the fifth, which is 3,125, and then you go one further and have five to the 3,125, which means multiply five times itself 3,000 times. Actually, 3,125 times, but who's counting? At least my computer could calculate that. Swapping the order of the numbers results in abject craziness. Three to the superpower of five would be three to the third to the third to the third to the third. That is insanely large. I don't own a computer that's able to perform that calculation. I'm not even sure one exists right now. Here's why. This is 27, this is something like seven trillion, and this number is too large to comprehend. Multiplying three by itself seven trillion times dwarfs anything today's computers can calculate. But then we take that immense number, and that just tells us one final time how many times we should multiply three by itself. The result is unfathomable. Well, that escalated quickly. Well, the next one is pentation, but after that, the naming operation is me screwing my line. Have word for wood travel. Beyond having a new fun way to horrify people with mind-bogglingly large numbers, we have discovered something that is more important we found an underlying pattern. As a mathematician, we want to take things we know, identify within that knowledge some assumption or pattern, and fiddle with it. 
There's all kinds of questions we can ask now that we wouldn't have had the language for just a few minutes ago. Things seem to be growing really fast. Are there things that grow faster? Are there inverses of these operations? That is, can these operations be undone? The list goes on. What questions can you come up with? Leave them in the comments below. In this video, we recapped how addition, multiplication, and exponentiation work, found a pattern that underlies all of these operations, and learned how to extend that pattern to discover something new, tetration. In the next video, we'll look at what happens when you flip those operations. Thanks to Aragami for hosting this episode of the Taylor series, and congratulations to you on successfully completing the next term in your own Taylor expansion. I'm Derek Taylor, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. If you really like the video, come on over to our Patreon page where you can get involved and see all the cool stuff we're doing.